The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! This, this, this is Talking Cowboys. Streaming live from the Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star in Frisco. Hand off, Elliott plowing to the goal line. Barry, sacked by Lord. Prescott keeps it, and he bangs it into the touchdown. And now your hosts, Isaiah Stanback. Heckma Harrison, Rob Phillips, and Kyle Yeomans. It's a Wednesday edition of Talking Cowboys here on DallasCowboys.com. Glad you're with us, as always, presented by Geico. And like I said earlier in the week, it's a hashtag say it with your chest every day this week because the Cowboys have an opportunity to go to the playoffs and win the NFC East. And we're going to break down the game in which they need to win in order to go to the playoffs. And that's against the New York Giants as they come up on the schedule this week in the Cowboys. Cowboys travel to MetLife Stadium, but first let me introduce the crew. As always, it's Isaiah Stanback, our resident Super Bowl champion, even though I might take that title away this week just based off the fact that you won it with the Giants. Wow. And so I think I might take that away yeah. wow. just for the week. I'll give it back to you next week whenever wow. the Cowboys get a win. Uh, we've got Cowboys insider in Rob safe, Phillips. Okay. What was that? <laughs> I said the ring's in the safe, Kyle. Oh. Don't hold that against me. Okay, okay. It's in the safe. It's not out there on your fingers, so that's good. And then we've got our professional football analyst, Heckma Harrison, as always, here on Talking Cowboys. I'm Kyle Yeomans. Glad you're with us. And, you know, it's a uh, it's a fun week, and it's been fun over the last three weeks for the Cowboys. I mean, three straight wins. You're starting to find a bit of a rhythm, and things are kind of looking up for the Cowboys, even though uh, it's not certain that they're going to make it to the playoffs. And, and today I kind of want to bring things back down to reality. I want to try and find a way to get better from a Cowboys standpoint because even though the Cowboys have had a ton of success, gentlemen, there are a lot of ways that this Cowboys team can improve going into this final week of the season and then, of course, into what could be the playoffs or what could be the 2021 offseason. So plenty of things to get to here on this edition of Talking Cowboys, but I wanted to start off with some positive news. As yesterday, Ezekiel Elliott was named uh, an award winner on – DallasCowboys.com or the Pro Football Writers gave Zeke the annual media award, the 2020 Good Guy Award, as voted on by the local chapter of the Professional Football Writers of America. Rob, you've had to deal with Zeke, I think, more than anybody on this show in terms of media and and the way that he kind of handles himself. What makes him stand out as a winner of this award this year? He always makes himself available. He's always the first guy to talk on Wednesday after their first practice of the week. He's always the first guy on the conference call after the game, win or lose, no matter if he's got 150 yards, if he's got three fumbles in the game. So, you know, that's what a leader does. And, uh, you know, he's, he's not the only guy who does that. Mm-hmm. Dak has won this award in the past. Tyrone Crawford has won this award in the past. But I think it, it stands out even more because – for, for his standards, this hasn't been a good year for him. Uh, he played well last week, but I think he would, you know, he said there's things he hasn't done well this year. So to stand in front of the media and answer those hard questions, he does it week after week after week. Isaiah, whenever it comes to being a player and, and having to deal with the media, it's not really a normal, usual thing routine thing I mean it usually does provide a little extra emphasis to to, uh, I guess just deal with the media and talk to people like me and Rob every single day but whenever it comes to to being a player what were some of those challenges that Zeke has now overcome by just being one of those guys that's available um, I never saw it as any challenge, man. Mm-hmm. I honestly was always one to, you know, kind of like Zeke and Dak. I, I had no problem being the first one there to, to speak on behalf of the team. You know, it's, it's an honor to, to be, to want, so for somebody to want information from you in that regard. You are not only representing yourself, you're representing the organization. I was taught early on, you know, that every time you present yourself on camera, you know, you literally, that's, that's a resume. Every, we talk about the resume on the field, that's your resume off the field. Mm. You know, it's setting you up for opportunities later on in life. Um, but you also, it's a responsibility of, of representing everybody in that locker room. When they're asking you about the team, guess what? You're the one talking. You're the one that they're gonna that they're gonna write about, but you're speaking holistically about everybody else. So um, I don't. I've never seen it as any pressure. I've always uh, honestly been a little bit um, irritated by guys who come across kind of harshly um, in, in the media. 
And I, and, and, and even in my time in New England, you know, I respected how Coach Belichick did it. He was available. He just didn't give you any information. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, going off of kind of the past award winners, and, and Rob had already mentioned a couple of them here, but Dak Prescott, Tyrone Crawford are the more recent members that have won this award. Brandon Carr won it in 2016. Jeremy Mincy was a back to back winner. Even Des Bryant won it back in wow. 2013. So anybody can win this award just based off of the fact that, uh, that you're available and real with the media. And I think Ezekiel Elliott is one of those guys that is real, Heckman, because no matter what kind of game it was, he's going to give you the truth and he's going to tell you exactly what he's thinking, even though there might be a couple sprinkled in cuss words or things like of the sort or frustration in the middle of there. No, I think Zeke will take that award, a good guy award. That's uh, that's a lot. I mean, that's that's good for him, man. You just think about the all the other things that's been written about Zeke in the past and, and him maturing and that being a part of it. I, and I know this has everything to do with the media. And I'm just just kind of linking this in to his good behavior uh, lately this year. You know, mm-hmm. there's been so many things that's been said about him. And so to, for him to get the, the good guy award, I'm, I'm sure he'll take it. I agree, and congratulations to Zeke on winning this award, but let's talk about how to improve for this Cowboys team going into this matchup with the Giants. It's a noon kickoff coming up this weekend and and on Sunday, and then the Cowboys are going to have to wait around until Sunday Night Football to figure out their NFC East Mm -hmm. fate, so lots of waiting after that's over should the Cowboys get a win. Now... I want to talk about the defense and start things off because yesterday I went back and listened to our show, another good show I thought from you guys, and and there was a ton of great insight and and analysis there. But we were really positive. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Uh, there There was a ton of positivity, and I'm not saying the positivity is wrong because they forced 10 turnovers over the last three games, but there are ways to improve this defense, Rob, and there's ways that the the Cowboys could find a way to be better defensively because right now there's only, what, uh, two, three good players, solid above average players on the defensive side of the football that you could argue, but how do they somehow improve this defense going into an offensively uh, challenged New York Giants team? Well, I think the obvious one would be just you have to prevent any type of big play down the field. I mean, the, the, that was the big eyesore yep. in the game last Sunday was the 81-yard touchdown to Deshaun Jackson. And, you know, that was an aberration in that game, but we have seen that happen at times throughout the season. I, I looked it up, and, I, you know, I think they've had uh, – it's, it's over a half dozen games where they've had – they've given up a, a, a big play of 40 yards or more. Mm. And I stopped there. But there have been plays of 60 yards and 80 yards. And you go back and look at that one, and, and it looked like, yes, maybe Cheeto got beat – but there was some communication issues too back there, and that's usually what happens. And uh, they've got to lock that down. I think that's specific to this matchup because this is a Giants team that, by and large, does not create big plays down the field. They don't really create them in the running game. They don't create them much in the passing game. And you can't give them something. You know, you can't allow them to have a chunk play to get a touchdown because I think they're only averaging like a touchdown and a half per game right now, right. or maybe the entire season. They're just not. <laughs> yes. They're not manufacturing points. Heck. <clears throat> No, not at all. I mean, the lowest scoring team in the league is the Giants. Mm-hmm. And I think the only time that they've ever sco- scored scored thirty points was against us. Oh, uh, great! So that's uh, <laughs> is that <laughs> right, back. man? Yeah, yeah, awesome. And uh, you know, Kyle, I think. I think that positivity that you're talking about is that for the first time we saw, we're not for the first couple of times now, we're seeing our defense get hit and hit back. You know, it, you know, the, we, Isaiah even talked about them having close to 500 yards, but the the uh, Philadelphia Eagles having close to 500 yards, but that was all due to the fact that we had a lead and obviously we weren't pressing the same. Uh, but the numbers at the end of the day point to a defense that's still struggling. We're still last in the league against the rush, right? We're mm-hmm. right now, I think passing, uh, we're somewhere around 27, 28. But then when you turn, you look at the turnover differential and what we've done with that, we've shot all the way up to 10 I believe Rob if I'm wrong please help correct me uh, yeah. but that's just that's just indicative of how fast things can turn around 
And luckily for this defense, they have shored up some of those problems that they have. You still have the communication issues there, uh, and you saw that on the bump to Deshaun Jackson. But after that, they got a lot of that together. And we've been on, we've been on our guy Jalen Smith uh, in coverage. I thought he did a pretty, I thought he did a, a pretty good job uh, in coverage against their tight ends and playing underneath. And those are just the things that he's going to have to continue to do this week, especially with Ingram and MetLife. Isaiah? Yep, totally, totally agree. Um, and, I, and I didn't mention that yesterday. Heck, I'm glad you brought it up. But I wanted to make sure we gave Jalen Smith some kudos. I know we're always on his head, um, beating him down a little bit. But he did a heck of a job. I thought he was mm-hmm. I thought he was a lot more sound in his coverages. I thought he was a lot more sticky. Um, every time the ball was on the ground, seemingly he was around on the ground, either covering somebody up or jumping on the ball. So I thought um, I thought he played one of his better games. And I think that had I think that had a lot to do with his, with the, not only, I know Sean Lee was rotating in there, but like I, like I mentioned earlier in the week, last week, Joe Thomas, you know, when he knows somebody else is really, really athletic next to him, I feel like he, he has the freedom to go, go do more. Um, but, um, I thought they played well. Collectively, like, like I said, they, they did give up too many yards. And, you know, as Heckman said, you know, some of that was, was in, was in slop time, but it was a pretty competitive game. Pretty competitive game, especially we had to come back um, in the first yeah. part. So you know, we those those splash plays, like like <clears throat> like Rob said, we have to do away with those. You you can you can there there aren't many teams in this league that are patient enough um, and and consistent enough to sustain drives without trying to do something outside of themselves. <laughs> mm-hmm. Most right. teams can't. They won't do the 12, 13, 14, 15 play drives. That the coordinators just don't have that patience. Most coordinators want to take a big shot. And if you can not, if you can be sound in your, in your assignments, if you can keep everything in front of you and you can tackle well, um, like we've been doing and, and make big hits whenever you have opportunity, whenever they, whenever they decide to pull that trigger, that's when you, t- that's when you hop on opportunity. That's when that quarterback's sitting back there a little bit longer than he usually does to give your lineman more time to get back there. That's when they throw the ball up there because guess what? Oh man, I, we haven't had a big play all day. We got to force it in there. And that's when you get the big interceptions that are tip balls. So that's, you just have to position yourself to be patient enough to wait on those opportunities, but you have to play sound defense in order to, to be in those positions. And whenever it comes to Daniel Jones, he's not going to be one of those quarterbacks that beats him, beats you with his arm 100% of the time. He's, he has the ability to throw the football, but it's not necessarily his strong suit. His strong suit is being able to run and having that dual threat ability. Now, Isaiah, I kind of want to get your input on something that Rob said initially, and that was about the mis- miscommunication on the back end in the secondary. And we thought maybe that had kind of subsided a little bit. And it sure it, it, it is better than it has been uh, earlier in the season. It's not Seattle where it was every two plays either Tyler Lockett or DK Metcalf was running free behind the defense, but we saw it again against Philadelphia. And Deshaun Jackson found his way open, and there was some miscommunication between Cheeto and Trayvon Diggs, and there was kind of that back and forth where does that come from and especially this point in the season your week 16 week 17 should those miscommunication issues start kind of subsiding a little bit more so instead of being so obvious on film they, sh- they it should subside uh, however it hasn't know, whenever you're playing the de- whenever you're playing like court like quarters defense like our defense likes to play uh, for whatever reason, reason Mike Nolan likes to play quarters defense, and we I've broken that down in the past, uh, where every every secondary guy has a quarter of the field. Well, when when you run those kind of defenses, you leave yourself susceptible to big plays. Reason being, quarter quarters coverage is supposed to stop people from being able to have big plays against you, right? Because I have four guys dedicated to keep to staying deep. However, in quarters coverage, the confusion comes when you start running over routes, which we tend to see a lot, right? Mm-hmm. Every team has ran a lot of over routes on us. The reason why that causes problems is because because you, as a natural instinct, you want to stay with that guy that's crossing your face, right? You want to stay with that guy. He's crossing your face. Oh, crap, I can't let him go over there. But responsibility-wise, you're supposed to pass it off, right? You're supposed to pass it off. You're supposed to say, hey, hey, man, coming across, right? Whatever it is, however you communicate, you need to get that communicated across. And our guys are still having problems with that, and every team is going to keep trying us in that regard. We talked about it yesterday in film room. It, whenever the guys go to single, single high, Kyle, you know, guys are they're, they're going to try to flood us. Coach Garrett's going to try you. He's going to try to overload you on that side, and they're going to try to stress whoever has the responsibilities of that part of the other part of the secondary. And this is something that we have to continue to work on, and it just comes with reps. It comes with over communicating. When we say over communicating in football, there's no such thing. You can't over communicate. I don't care if they know what the heck we're doing. Hey, 
Watch him. Hey, he's coming across. Over communicate so that you can make sure that those mistakes don't continue to happen. That's that's good stuff, and that and that's really important this week too because we got to see what their situation is at safety. Um, you know, Darian Thompson had the concussion in the game. We'll mm-hmm. see what Xavier Woods' status is with the ribs injury. So you saw Jordan Lewis back there. I I thought I saw Trayvon Diggs too. Uh, I'd have to go back and look at it again. But they had to shuffle some things back there, so they. They may have a different group, you know, and uh, communication even more key that way. I'm looking at games in which Trayvon Diggs and, and Cheeto Ouzi have played together, and I only see three. I see the, the opening week. Oh, no, there's four. So first two weeks of the season against the Rams and the Falcons, and then the last two weeks that we've played, and that's San Francisco and Philadelphia. So, Isaiah, when you're talking about reps and you're, you're talking about that communication, I mean, th- that might be one of the reasons why there was miscommunication between 24 and 27 because they played a grand total of four games together. But, uh, Heckman, whenever you, you're talking about this, this secondary and you have that safety up at the top, of, and it's a big question mark right now with Darian Thompson, and, of course, guys could potentially get healthy like an Xavier Woods back there. But who would you want to see next to uh, a Donovan Wilson in the secondary? Who would you like to see fill in that role? Because, I mean, I know there's Reggie Robinson that's been back there and has pushed the safety. There's a couple different options here, but is there anybody that sticks out? Well, I mean, if for the coaching staff, I know that they're locking in their game plan today. Uh, Xavier Woods would be the, the senior leader there. I think, you know, he knows the defense, and that would be the obvious choice for me as the guy that's been playing in that position all year. Uh, but just the communication, you're right, Isaiah. It's all about these guys overly communicating and establishing that during the week so that when you do come to the game or you do, uh, there is a formation that is foreign to you that you're able to talk your way through it in real time. And believe me, those guys are hollering and talking to each other the whole entire game. And so I just felt like with that play and in, in several plays that that teams are going to test us with if these guys you know get beat on the play just go back to it look at it on the board and get it corrected that's where we've gone wrong and I think that the coaching staff has done a really good job of getting that confidence in these guys so that they can play fast play free and assignment sound and so all of those things I believe are relative and I think that's why it's so equally important going into the future for this team because if you're going to keep the same defensive scheme you're going to have to have guys that have played that scheme as well and so look no, I don't know. Like we're only dealing with what's going on on Sunday, but like I said, just looking into the future and looking at how we're going to play this to, uh, in the future. You know, looking into the future and how we're going to play it. Having guys like Cheeto, having guys like Diggs to be familiar with each other, and this being the fifth game that they play together is going to be very important uh, for that communication that we're talking about. Isaiah, I would like to take a quick moment to put you on the single cam and to to have you just plead your case one more time for Reggie Robinson to see significant snaps. you got about 10 (laughs) seconds here. Go. Reggie, I need you to come up, talk to all the coaches, and say, hey, give me a chance or give me up out here. No, I'm saying no. Don't don't say that. Don't (laughs) Don't do that. that. Oh, my gosh. He's a rookie, my (laughs) my guy. (laughs) (laughs) No, man. I I, I hope they give him an opportunity. I know he's been getting some reps here and there, but – you know, as you guys said early on, Heckman, when I said, no, nah, don't throw some of these guys out there to the wolves. Don't throw this. Don't, you know, just throw this boy in the ocean to see if he can swim. <laughs> he, so did have the, he did have the punch out, right? On yes, specialty. he did. And he they, did. Yes, yeah, he did. Yeah, he forced a fumble, yeah. And CJ was out of bounds to recover it by just one toe. And it got me thinking. It's like, man, he did that kind of stuff at Tulsa. And, and mm-hmm. I, I don't know what they're seeing in practice, but it's like we could have seen him on special teams maybe a little sooner. If not safety, maybe special teams, you know? Maybe he's just a gamer. He's just a gamer, guys. We just got to find a way to, to be, be a gamer. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take our, take our first break here on Talking Cowboys <laughs> presented by Geico. When we come back, we're going to start previewing the Giants offense and the Cowboys defense. I'm going to ask the question, how many guys on this defense do you think have – Imp- or have up their stock since the beginning of the season and heading into the, the final week of the season. We'll talk about it next here on Talking Cowboys. There's nothing as unique as our eyes, which is why Essilor pioneers ways to make lenses as unique as you. Verilux for super sharp vision, Essential Blue for protection, and Crizal for freedom from glare. Three cutting-edge solutions in a single unique lens. 
So whatever your needs, insist on Essilor. Visit your local Essilor experts and find the perfect lens for you. See more. Do more. Essilor. Since 1865, Stetson hats are American-made with pride right here in Texas. And Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Want to show your Texas and team pride, too? You can. By purchasing your own Stetson, you can look just like how the flag guys do on field at every home game. Stetson hats, the official crown of all self-respecting cowboys and your favorite football team. Get yours today at shop.dallascowboys.com or at stetson.com. I'm Jay Novacek, former tight end for the Dallas Cowboys. Back in the day, I was the guy who always got the tough yards, and that's why I run with John Deere today. In fact, I have a John Deere 3025E tractor that can handle any yard work I need to do, even the tough yards way out back. So if you have one acre or a thousand, John Deere has the equipment that's just right for you. Visit a John Deere dealer today and run with us. We are the official tractor provider of your Dallas Cowboys. Dear, it's 1908. Don't you think we should get electricity? Hmm, and stop using candles to see at night. It's just electricity lights up the room fast. It's more reliable than candles blowing out, and people seem to love it nationwide. Well, candles are... Dear, did you just run into the wall? Nope. May I have a new candle, please? Historically, switching to new technology is a no-brainer. Today, it's AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure, and nationwide. Switch to AT&T 5G. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan. May not be in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Back to Talkin' Cowboys. Whether you're watching from home or you're cheering in the stands with Essilor lenses, you can see every exciting play. Book an appointment at your local Essilor experts and see what Essilor can do for you. See more, do more. Essilor here on Talking Cowboys. Isaiah is now back with us and ready to roll. Now he was uh, he was with us originally. I got Isaiah stand back. Rob Phillips, heck, my Harrison. I'm Kyle Yeomans, and what is a say it with your chest week here on Talking Cowboys? And we're about to say it with our chest previewing. The Cowboys and the Giants. The Cowboys got the better of the Giants the first time around, even though they left with kind of those bubble guts that we talk about oh so often on this show. 37-34 was the win against the Giants. They won that game thanks to a game-winning drive from Andy Dalton. However, they lost Dak Prescott in that game, and it resulted in one, two, three, four straight losses heading into the bye week following the Dak Prescott injury. Losses in which you scored 10 points, 3 points, 9 points, 19 points uh, along the way. But since the bye week, the Cowboys are 4-2, and two, and they have a chance to make the postseason with a win this week and a Washington loss. But we mentioned this Giants offense, and I wrote about this yesterday in Big Picture, gentlemen, uh, which kind of previews the week and the five storylines from each team. But it's a unique opportunity for Jason Garrett as the offensive coordinator for the Giants coming in mm-hmm. as really kind of on the hot seat again. I mean, second straight year he's been on the hot seat. He was on the hot seat last year. He's on the hot seat as a coordinator this year. But he not only has a chance to save his job and go to the postseason, but he has an opportunity to do it against his former organization. Now, Heckma, what do you think about JGZ? Is there any extra motivation? I know he's going to say the right things. He's going to talk about we've got to do what we can do and we can we can control what we can control. But is there any ounce of Jason Garrett – that has that revenge mind on, or that revenge on the mind going into a matchup like this. Hey Kyle, it's really strange, man. The the dichotomy at work between both of these franchises going into the season one being that we add Mike McCarthy and he's the piece that gets us to that championship that we're looking for, and then then Joe Judge in New York kind of rebuilding with Jason Garrett, and now here we are playing for potentially the NFC East. I mean, like I I for one have always liked uh, Jason Garrett. I know there are a lot of people that that have have uh, uh, opinions about him, probably Isaiah, and he'll say that talk about that. But, you know, I, I just think that, you know, this is a the parody and it's wonderful for, that he has this opportunity against his old team and we have an opportunity versus him uh, as well. And so I'm not really worried about him per se as I am, you know, some of the other pieces in their offense. I know that, you know, as far as the, the scoring for New York has been completely down and maybe that's what's going to put him on the hot seat. But mm-hmm. if the Giants are able to squeak out a victory this week, I think he may be in a position to save his reputation or his job. Rob? 
Yeah, I'm just I'm cycling through all the JG isms I've heard over the years. You know, <laughs> how like we doing, he, guys? If he were asked that question, Kyle, he would say I'm focusing on having a great Wednesday, and that's the <laughs> mindset he's got to have. He's got he's not. I, you know, I'm, is there an ounce of him that wants to beat the Cowboys as a competitor? I'm sure there is, uh, but yeah, I mean, heck, said it like they're, they're trying to get their their house in order offensively. I mean, I think mm-hmm. they've got 26 points scored in the last three games, and. I, you know, I think he'll be back there next year. I, I think you know we're seeing a little bit of this here in terms of the short off season, and they've lost a lot of their their key guys. You know, um, losing Saquon Barkley, you Jeez. can't understate it because you know they're still trying to build up that offensive line, and he can mask some of that. And while Wayne Gallman's done a good job running for them, they don't have Saquon who can get you two yards, three yards, sixty yards. You know, that's that's been the biggest thing, and and um, they're still. I think they still need to upgrade some of their personnel. They'll try to do that, and he's trying to work through that. But we, the Cowboys, just can't hand them. Like I mentioned earlier, just can't hand them easy opportunities. I think they. I want to say there was a pick six early in that first game, mm-hmm. where they scored off of or early turnovers led to. It was it. a scoop so and score. Can't make it easy. It was a yeah, scoop Anthony and score. Brown. There you go. That's right. Exactly. So you just you can't make it easy on JG this week. Well, both teams, I think, had a scoop and score because Anthony Brown had the scoop and score off of the Demarcus Lawrence strip sack, and then I believe one of their linebackers, I can't remember who it was, went back and, and I yeah, think he picked quarter. it up. Yeah, in that first quarter, and it put him up, what, 17-3 yeah. yep. to three or 14-3 to three or something like that along the way, so they were up multiple yeah. scores. Isaiah, how do, they, how do they improve that offense? Because I know you've talked about it. We talked about it in film room yesterday. They know how to attack the holes. Do they just not have the personnel to do so? I don't think they have the offensive line to do so. Mm-hmm. It's, it's much like, it's much like we, uh, like our scenario was, we have all the skill sets, all the skill personnel out there, but you know we didn't have the offensive line for that series of games. So it makes things hard. It doesn't matter how much talent you have out there when you can't get them the ball. <laughs> so uh, I think that's the, the issue that he's ran into. Majority of JG's stuff is he runs a lot of mirrored concepts, a ton of mirror concepts and I think he's gotten better. He's improved and expanded his repertoire uh, since, since those days that I was with him, but he still likes to sit back and push the ball down the field. He likes to find the gaps in the, you know, in the, in the seams, he likes to find the seams in, in the, in the, in the coverages and things of that nature. So a lot of his stuff, he needs time. He doesn't want to dink and dunk. That's not his style. He likes the big shot. And, um, you know, that's, that's his internal battle. So as long as we can get home and, and, and beat up on this offensive line, there, I think he's going to continue to struggle because, uh, like you guys mentioned, he, yeah. doesn't have, he doesn't have San Quan to lean on. Yeah, that's, that's very important, Isaiah. And getting home this game, uh, Tank Lawrence was able to get this strip sack. But just not just negating the big plays from these guys is going to be very important. We can't give up another one of those 75-yard bombs. Uh, and also keeping Galman in check. And you've seen that, Rob, over the last couple of weeks. Galman has had like 12 carries, 27 yards. But when you go back to the Seattle game, which they beat Seattle in a game that they just muddied the waters with the running game, Wayne Galman and had like 126 yards it just makes everything run so much more efficient for the Giants and so for the Cowboys again giving up uh, the most yards against the rush in the league that's very important if they want to get a victory because Galman can gash them and if you want to give Jason Garrett credit for something in particular with the quarterback situation it's Daniel Jones's Mm -hmm. turnovers are down you know I think his last four or five starts he hasn't thrown a pick and and sometimes that's you know that's been their Achilles' heel. Is he'll try to make something happen, as you guys mentioned earlier. Try to you try to step outside yourself to finally get something going downfield and, and throw a pick. And sometimes the protection's a part of that too, the fumbles. But they've been better in that regard. They just haven't been able to manufacture yardage and manufacture points. And I do want to correct myself after I kind of corrected Rob earlier. It was an interception return, 46 yards from Kyler Fackrell that actually put the Giants up 14-3 to at the end of that first quarter. So it was an interception return for a touchdown from the Giants' defense and then the fumble recovery return for a touchdown for the Cowboys' defense. But, yeah, and also in the game earlier this season, Dil- or excuse me, Daniel Jones did not throw an interception there as well. He had the fumble, so there's opportunities there in and he's going to put the ball on the turf, it seems like. And I know that was something that Isaiah was really adamant about the first time we played the Giants was get after Daniel Jones and force him to force turnovers. But really, 
it was only the one. It was the one turnover that that proved to be the game changer because it tied the game at 17, and then after that it was back and forth with Dak Prescott until he got hurt, and then Andy Dalton came in and went 9 of 11 and led the game-winning drive. So there was that back and forth in that game. Isaiah, you just cannot allow this Cowboys team to beat themselves this week, right? No, just keep doing what we've been doing. We've been really good in terms of taking care of the ball. I mean, we know when Zeke gets the ball, we know what's on the forefront of his mind. You know, he's he's he's, he's not going to give the ball up again. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Last yeah. game, there's a couple instances where I was like, ooh, those were they're going for the those ball. Those slow-mo cameras, like, nope, and it's kind of shaking today. a little bit. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, not today. So, you know, I don't I'm not concerned about Zeke anymore. Andy Dalton, you know, it's probably about one one ball per game that I think he he probably, you know, tries <laughs> to force it, you know, for so for the most part, he's being the savvy veteran that that knows, "Hey, we're going to have our opportunities. He's not trying to force things. He I think he has established a trust with Kellen Moore now. That's the thing when you're a quarterback, when you don't trust your offensive coordinator, you're like, man, screw it. I'm just going to figure it out myself. But when you trust your when you trust your offensive coordinator, now guess what? Okay, I, I won't try to force it in this window because I know he, we're going to have opportunity to move the chains and he'll give me the opportunity to throw it down the field. So that's that's gotten better. And then on the defense side of the ball, like you guys already said, don't give up the big play. Keep everything in front of you. Make sound decisions. Make you know good tackles. Square up on some guys. And then when you have opportunity to, to pop somebody in their chest and pop the ball out, do it. That's what we've been playing. That's how we've been playing the last few weeks. Um, if, if we if we improve at all in limiting these guys to yardage, this this and these games might turn to blowouts. And Daniel Jones and Daniel Jones with the hamstring injury coming off of the hamstring injury he may be a, a little <laughs> bit less. Yeah, he may be a little bit less of himself. And in the first meeting that we had, we were worried about that, man, because Daniel Jones, you know, call him Daniel Dimes, but he has some jets. You know, he mm-hmm. can get loose on you. And with the hamstring injury, I don't think you have to worry about that. And I mean, I wouldn't <laughs> just leave the open the Red Sea for him and dare him to do it. But at the same time, <laughs> there's just not that worry that you had there before with his most. Mobility. And so this Cowboys defense can definitely keep it in front of them. And again, just no cheap penalties, no pass interferences and don't help a struggling offense uh, get up on you by, with cheap penalties. And the Cowboys. One do- more thing about the turnovers, too. Sorry, Kyle. Go for it. One more thing about the turnovers. Just, you know, we've been on the coaches this year, you know, and, and a lot of people have in terms of special teams, defense, but even Kellen Moore, too. I'm going to give credit to John Fossil for some of the turnovers they've been able to have, and, and Isaiah mentioned yeah. uh, preventing them offensively, every Wednesday, Thursday, they drill the hell out of it. John Fossil is also the, the, the fundamentals coordinator, and they do a lot of drill work on ball security and, and stripping and doing all those things. So maybe, maybe over 15, 16 weeks, that's, that's helped. Uh, you got to give pl- credit to the players first, but, but I think uh, Fossil's involvement in that has been, has been key too. We think about, we already mentioned today, uh, Reggie Robinson punching the ball out. That was on special teams. Well, last week, or I guess two weeks ago now, against San Francisco, Dorrance Armstrong forcing a fumble. That was on special teams. So it has resulted in game changing plays. And hey, if you, your defense couldn't get your turnovers, at least your special teams unit is trying to do something for you. And that's something that I know the Cowboys are looking to continue going into week 17. Uh, also, not to mention, the Cowboys are back on the practice field today. Today, like you said, and we'll see what the injury report looks like. But on that defense, I think the health of the secondary is the biggest key component right now. Is Xavier Woods going to be available? Is Darian Thompson going to be available? Are these four corners still healthy enough to where they can continue to build uh, that continuity and play together as the top four players in that secondary? Those are all important questions that hopefully will be answered today and tomorrow via the practice field, but we'll have to see how that is, but we'll update you tomorrow on what that ultimately ends up being. When we come back here on Talking Cowboys, stock up, stock down on the defense. Who has improved in 2020 and who is going to be a key member of that defense in 2021 when we come back after the break we're back with a tasty treat that's sweeping airwaves and taste buds it's new dr pepper and cream soda let's take a listen dr pepper and cream soda is here a new combo that's music to my ears okay let's play cream soda and dr pepper time Ah, music to my ears and mouth. New Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda. A delicious duet. There's nothing as unique as our eyes. 
which is why Essilor pioneers ways to make lenses as unique as you. Verilux for super sharp vision, Essential Blue for protection, and Grisol for freedom from glare. Three cutting edge solutions in a single unique lens. So whatever your needs, insist on Essilor. Visit your local Essilor experts and find the perfect lens for you. See more, do more, Essilor. The Cowboys way, where 16 Hall of Famers and five championships shows us what success looks like. Where turkey is always the second best part of Thanksgiving Day. Where we are all defined by one single thing, the star. Where we as fans know it's our job to keep the tradition going. Bank of America is proud to be the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys and to support the quest of living life the Cowboys way. Copyright 2020, Bank of America Corporation. Dear, it's 1908. Don't you think we should get electricity? Hmm, and stop using candles to see at night. It's just electricity lights up the room fast. It's more reliable than candles blowing out, and people seem to love it nationwide. Well, candles are... Oh. Dear, did you just run into the wall? Nope. May I have a new candle, please? Historically, switching to new technology is a no-brainer. Today, it's AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure, and nationwide. Switch to AT&T 5G. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan. May not be in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Back to Talking Cowboys. Final segment of Talking Cowboys here on this Wednesday, presented by Geico, and always brought to you by Bose Quiet Comfort Earbuds. With Bose Quiet Comfort Earbuds, you can experience audio at a whole new level. Bose Quiet Comfort Earbuds are the official earbuds of the Dallas Cowboys. And Heckma Harrison, what do they sound like? It's like a symphony in my head, Kyle. Wow. <laughs> it never changes. It never gets old. Thank goodness for Bose Quiet Comfort Earbuds. I wonder, uh, once again, I've, I've asked this on a couple of occasions, but if a representative of Bose could, could get in touch with the show, let us know if you like that or if you don't like that, because we have a ton of fun with it and we love Bose, so we're not, we're, we're having fun, so I want to just know if this is acceptable or not. Uh, now, Isaiah, can, but Isaiah's, can, Isaiah's can, can struggling it, 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 right now. Yeah, can they, can they send me a pair of Boses too? I, <laughs> I feel left out right now. I he feel is like struggling. I'm like in the, in the, in, I feel like I'm like the second cousin that has to stay in a tent outside that's outside the sliding doors. You know, like what's yeah. up with the? Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody get in touch with Bose. Do us a favor. Bose. Yeah, Bose. Thank Holla you. at your boy. Holla Come at your boy. Through, Bose. Essilor is going to hook us up here in the next couple of moments. <laughs> so I guess yeah. Bose could do the same thing. But final couple minutes here and. I want to talk about stock up, stock down. We only have like five or six minutes left. I, I guess we could go a little bit over, but Mike McCarthy's got to talk today. So, Isaiah, we're going to start with you. I want you to name three players on the defense, three players this season that have upped their stock but are, all, but maybe not necessarily cornerstone players. They can be, but that's not what I'm asking. I'm just saying have upped their stock here in 2021. Or excuse me, 2020. You're just talking about up. Yes. Just talking about up. <sighs> Gallimore, up. Okay. Gregory, up. Love it. Donovan Wilson, up. So those are the three that I think I was kind of right in there. Rob, Heckma, do you have anybody to add to that list in terms of stock up? I'm going to say J. J. Lou. I think J- Jordan, Jordan Lewis, Lewis has yeah. been playing okay. a lot better over the last couple of weeks. And, you know, toughness, all that. I, I would throw him in there as well as a stock up. Yeah, I, that was where I was going. He's probably been their best corner the last mm-hmm. month. And also not to mention, in the past, he hasn't had those opportunities to, to be a, a fully rotational player, a full starter, things of the sort, just based off of the the previous coaching staff. He was never really in that conversation. So I would agree. I would say stock up. So those are four guys that have improved their stock. Now I'm going to flip this question around for you, gentlemen. We're going to start with Rob on this one. But who is a cornerstone member of this defense that you know not only has he been good in 2020, but he will be back and be a cornerstone member in 2021? Uh, Demarcus Lawrence. Okay. Is that is that too obvious? No, that's uh, perfect. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think who's at, who's cornerstone, like a cornerstone mm-hmm. player defensively, because man, there's going to be some change back in the secondary. A lot of guys up for for free agency. I don't know if they've got a bunch of cornerstones back there. Cornerstones. Um, man. I, you know what? I'm going to throw Randy Gregory into that mix because okay. I think if Randy Gregory is not a start, starter next year, 
He got a, a little bit of an extension, right? I think he signed through next season. And uh, I think he's going to play even more meaningful snaps next year. He's, he's around 30, 35 snaps a game right now. That's going to bump up next year. Okay. Heckma, what do you think? Yeah, I, I want to say Randy Gregory as well. I'm, I'm hesitant uh, to say that, obviously, because of, of the past and suspensions. But I think this guy has a new lease. I think he sees his potential and knows what he can do in the NFL. And I think the time away uh, made him appreciate the game uh, even more. And that's, I've, prayfully, that's, that's what his realization is on his ability. But Tank Lawrence as well. I think he's had an off year. He started slow. But you can see how 90, when he's on, he can influence the game. Mm-hmm. Isaiah? Yeah, I'm going to have to go against you guys. Um, I, I don't see D-Law as a cornerstone player. I see him as an important player, but I don't see him as a cornerstone, cornerstone. player. I, I don't think that you can – I think you can start the, the season next year and not have him and be all right, mm. um, especially for what he's demanding financially. Uh, I think that Trevon Diggs is a cornerstone player for you. I think that what he's done this year, um, he has yeah. a lot of growth. But I think that that's somebody that you go into this draft class and you say, okay, we need one more guy. All right? You go, we need one more guy because you know the leaps and bounds that he's going to make from year one to year two. The players that he faced, what he, all the adversity he's overcome this year, he's going to make huge strides going into next year. So this offseason, you focus on getting one additional corner and a safety. And you're feeling real good about your secondary. So I, 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 if I had to say anybody's a cornerstone, I would say Trevon Diggs because I think more so because mm. of the upside. I would agree with you on Diggs, yeah. Uh, yes. They certainly view him that way. I, on D-Law, though, I, I know what he's making. And I, it's for me, it's kind of like the Zeke thing. The contract is what it is. But if they, if they didn't have him in the lineup, where <laughs> – would their run defense be? That's that's my that's my question that I struggle with. I know his yeah. sacks aren't there, but it's, <laughs> it's it's a lot of the little stuff too that he gets done. It's, yeah, uh, and only reason why I say that I don't agree with that, uh, Rob. I disagree with you on that, which we don't do that often. Is <laughs> Zeke Zeke's success depends on a lot of other guys, right? Versus D Law, he, he most of the time he has one on one matchups most most of the game, so. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen that production, that level of production to, to justify what he's asking to get paid. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying he's not a good player. I'm not saying all that. But like for what he's getting yeah. paid, there's other dudes that you would go out there and get. Mm. They it's completely ton, changed. It's a ton of money. They changed everything that that guy did. So you're going to have to, if we're handing out mulligans to anybody, D-Law is True. definitely going to have to get one because they changed his game completely from where it was before. And so, yeah. you know, still, and Rob, you say, where would we be in, in the running game had he not been there? When you finished last in the league, I think eh, people kind of frown on that. But, again, it may have been where it was 300, may have been 400. Oh, <laughs> we God. D-Law in some of those instances. But, but still, I mean, you want to you talk about a guy that you know can influence the game. And I just look for D-Law to come back next year, familiarize himself uh, with this defense, and obviously add those other key pieces uh, to improve upon that pass rush. So I, I'd love right, to ask you guys a quick question before we go off to air, Kyle. Yes, very, very a quick. quick question? Very quick. If you guys had an option to get Von Miller and swap him out for D-Law, would you? Mm. Oh, wow. Mm. Come on. No. Really? No. <laughs> no. I wouldn't. I know. No, man. I would no. I do I don't it. think I would do it. Not coming off the entry. No. Yeah, yeah would, I don't think so either. Wouldn't happen. Wouldn't happen. No. Uh, That's tough. Isaiah. Also, what's up with you? I, I love this question. I love what Isaiah is bringing to the table here, and I love the questions that he's asking because it's a lot of the same things that I've said on the other side of the football about Ezekiel Elliott. It really is. I mean, go back, and I want you guys to go back and listen to this segment. And I, this wasn't my intention, but I want to throw this out there because you could take D Law's name out of this conversation and replace it with Ezekiel Elliott, and it's the same exact argument all the way through on the. But you didn't hear what segment. Isaiah said about Zeke needing a front line to be yeah. Zeke. You, yeah. you didn't hear no, none of that, did you? you no, I heard that, but I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm I mean, saying there's there's conversations on both sides of the football that have well, this going into the offseason. 
it brings a whole different perspective to it when you when you factor in money always yeah. right so that Absolutely. yeah from that perspective yeah but it is interesting how zeke man he ran great in the second half yeah, when he, he had did. holes this big to run through yeah. you know it's interesting interesting when that 63 happens 63 you know? yards hey guys, away from a thousand i just want to let you know it's the same offensive line that they've been playing behind the last couple of weeks i just want to let that be known it's the same offensive line where he had like 40 yards as to where he had 105 one team was the cincinnati players, Bengals. better production yeah yeah, whatever. Yes. Against a bad team. Against a bad team. <laughs> that's that's what I'm talking about. I'm, they are against a bad team. Now, that's going to do it for us on Talking Cowboys. We've got more saying it with our chest coming up tomorrow. And, you know, it's going to be a lot of fun. We've got our prediction segments, our final prediction segment of the regular season. How about that? Can Rob no! Phillips hold on for the title in the regular season and thrust his way into the spotlight heading into the postseason. We'll talk about it tomorrow, but for today, for Chris Beam, for Isaiah Stanback, for Rob Phillips, and for Heckma Harrison, I'm Kyle Yeoman saying so long from the star in Frisco. We'll see you tomorrow on Talking Cowboys. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about-